Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw, the first ever eight no edition. Uh, Richie, I saw people debating like, what, what, what did you like better, 2022, 20, 2023? And I was just like, is that really a question? Like, how are we <laughs> at that point? Like, it took us till, you know, week 11 to get to eight wins last year, and we've done it in week eight this year. So, Richie, how's your weekend been? Been phenomenal, man. Uh, you know, I, I got to actually hung out with uh, Brian Hathaway, who does a lot of our graphics, and Nico Chen. You know, he paid for the entire bars tab. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, right. Now they they were in town for a horror convention, horror movie convention. Uh, pretty cool stuff. But yeah, just eight and oh, that that's crazy to think. And you know, I hope as a fan base we don't take this for granted where we are right now because this is so special. This is a hell of a run for Florida State, and I'm so excited where we are right now. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to see. Um, the team is, I mean, you know, you can certainly nitpick a lot of things, but, you yeah. know, I, I, what are there, like seven undefeated teams left? Shout out my Liberty Flames. They're still up there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it just not, you know, seven out of 133. Um, it is just not very many teams that can say that. And uh, a lot of teams have struggled a lot of weeks, and, um, you know, Oklahoma fell from the rankings this week. And so they've. Did I, probably, did I not call that one on the Wednesday night show? <laughs> nailed it. I didn't. I didn't want to believe, but I. I was riding with, riding with them like an idiot. So anyway, <laughs> double fries, no slaw. I'll also give a shout out to Guthrie's. Um, you know the the Guthrie's red zone. We've been pretty good in there. I don't have the exact statistics, yeah. but I think we've only missed one time inside of the red zone this year. Uh, Guthrie's double fries, no slaw. Brought to you by Guthrie's. Um, 18, oh, shoosh, uh, 2550 North Monroe or 1818 West Tennessee Street. You guys don't really need the addresses. You're either getting it right by the stadium there on Tennessee Street or uh, go up in Monroe and get away from town a little bit and go grab your gut box over there. Richie, Florida State beats Wake Forest. Uh, blowout win, 41-16. Um, down, down some guys, down some wide receivers, had some guys banged up, had a couple of guys on the offensive line kind of banged up too. Um, but didn't really matter. Uh, you, but you were down Johnny Wilson, Hikey Williams and Destin Hill w didn't really make an impact at all. Florida state looked really, really good. We'll talk about Jordan Travis here in just a minute. But, um, I think early in the year, you, you really liked Florida state against this wake team and you thought that wake lost a lot. And so you should have a good chance to go out and win, but that was still a team that was on a three and oh winning streak against you in the ACC with the refs that I did a video on that'll come out tomorrow morning that you guys will all enjoy. Uh, you just never know, but Florida state cruise to victory 41 to 16, just kind of initial thoughts or immediate reaction to the win. And then we'll kind of break down some more specific things here in a minute. Yeah. I think I said 45 to 10 on the Wednesday night live show. And you know, it, it, it's what I thought it would be. That first half was just dominant, right? It, especially towards the end. I said, no, I want another touchdown here. And sure enough, they go and get another touchdown. It was just a phenomenal game for Florida State. Um, like you said, we can nitpick all we want. There's plenty of things to nitpick uh, on this team. But, man, we're sitting here 8-0. And we did what we should have done to Wake Forest, right? We went there. We took Snuggy Hill. We we, we beat them the way we were, su we were supposed to beat them. And that that's what you want to see out of Florida State right now. Because now... You know, the standards heading into the season have changed, DJ. We're not just looking at an ACC championship. Like, we're, we're going to lock up a trip to Charlotte next week when we beat Pitt. This is about the college football playoff and what can be, happen beyond that. And that's what I'm so excited about. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we'll Wednesday, tune in, guys. I think we're going 9-0, and TJ. But, man, th this team is something to be excited about because they are so special. Jordan Travis played a hell of a game. Um, I think at 363 yards, over 400 total yards from scrimmage. Yeah, this this is a fun team to watch. Yeah, they're they're certainly and they play complimentary football. I thought Georgia did a good yeah. job of that yesterday. They playing complimentary football against Florida. Like their offense is really efficient, <laughs> but their their defense, you know, plays well too. And they they kind of play well off of each other. And I think Florida State does that as well. So, like you said, 34 points in the first half. Uh, Jordan looked really comfortable, spread the ball around a ton. That screen play to Benson was phenomenal. It very <laughs> much reminded me of the the Devontae Freeman one against Miami in 2013, where it was just like set up perfectly. He made one move, and then there was no chance that anybody was was getting to him. In fact, he maybe even a little bit better, he trucked a guy uh, to end up getting into the end zone as well. Uh, like you said, Jordan with – I. I I thought it was just under 400 yards, but I'm not going to do math after 
you know, IPA number <laughs> of the day. Uh, but yeah, like 400 yards, four touchdowns total, three in the air, one on the ground. Um, Trey looks more comfortable. Jordan looks more comfortable. Um, when you look at Jordan's numbers compared to the other Heisman uh, contenders, they're very comparable. And he's throwing the ball a ton less than those guys are. He's throwing it like 25, 30 times a game. And they're all throwing it like 45, 50 times a game. And so we'll talk a little bit about the Heisman in a video later this week as well. But defense looked good. I know that, you know, the streak was broken of, um, you know, what was it? Uh, zero points in the second half against teams, but you hold them to seven in the first half on one drive that they kind of got hot on. And uh, in the second half, you know, second half was completely garbage time. You know, I, I don't, it's hard to take a lot away from the second half. Um, but you know, yeah, they, they scored twice there, I guess, you know, congrats or hurrah or whatever, but defense looked good. Five sacks, 10 tackles for losses. Verse got in there and mixed it up a couple of times. Pat Payton was really, really good. Um, <laughs> the defense was a lot of fun this weekend and I'll, I'll even take the explosive plays and giving up a few more points than normal. But I really like the way the defense played um, really from start to finish in this one. Yeah. And I think the defense has been overlooked all season, TJ, like, like they've been solid. I, I've been really happy with this defense. Adam Fuller got a lot of hate early on. And I think it was personnel. Like the, he just didn't have players when he first got here and it sucks to say that, but it's the truth. And now he has players and the defense is playing the way they should. This game was never in doubt. When you went to halftime with 34 points on, from the offensive side, there was no chance. It, there was zero chances in this galaxy that Florida State was going to lose that game because Wake Forest was not going to score on this defense. Yeah. You got outscored 9 nothing in the third quarter. You know, a lot of people complain, oh, you, you haven't played a full game. You haven't played a full four quarters. And there are very few teams out there that have played, you know, actually there are no teams out there that have played a full four quarters, um, you know, all season. I also think like once you're up 34 to seven at half, you aren't doing as much. You, you're not trying to go as crazy. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you, you, you got outplayed in the third quarter. Um, and you had two possessions. One possession was a three and out. I'll give you that. The other, you drove 66 yards and missed a field goal. Um, may have also been a missed defensive pass interference on that uh, third and eight as well on Keon Coleman. But, you know, I'll, I'll save the ref video for tomorrow. Um, we got outplayed in the th fourth quarter or in the third quarter, and you scored like two or three plays into the fourth quarter. And so, I don't know, it's tough for me to be super, super upset with how the team played. Um, overall, you were the much better team. You came out and dominated like you were supposed to. You got to eight and zero. Um, in all honesty, I mean, Richie, you said it. You know, you you lock up a trip to Charlotte with a win against Pitt next week. There's also, and and I don't think this happens, but I think you've already done enough to where if even if you lost the next two, enough chaos would happen in behind you that you would still end up getting in. Now, I don't want to test that theory. No. I don't <laughs> I don't want to try <laughs> I don't want to try and find out. Um, you know, what's the what's the thing F around to find out? But I I I ran a bunch of different scenarios and you'd probably still even be in because uh, we'll talk about it here in a minute. Louisville or Virginia Tech is going to pick up their second loss. Um and you'd probably still find a way to sneak in. Again, not something I want to test out, not something we want to try, but you've essentially already done enough to to get in. Now you just go beat Pitt where you're a three-touchdown favorite, and you'll do so. So, Jeremiah. Fire up the war chance and plant the spear. Nose win. Nose win. Yeah, FSU inserted his dominance by targeting Wake's number one corner right off the bat and winning. Yeah, they, they were force-feeding Keon Coleman to start. Keon, the Thank man. You, Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah for the love. But they were they went to him like the first four plays. The first yeah. four plays were targets at Keon, and that one-handed catch for the touchdown and then like the rock the cradle <laughs> and the the dance afterwards. Hey, I got an IPA too. Um, but uh, yeah, he is special. Richie, you know he's ninth, or not ninth right now. You know he has nine receiving touchdowns. The... Um, the the record at Florida State is 15 and like top eight is like 10 or 11. I tweeted yesterday. I'll try and find it while I talk about it and kind of give you guys the more official numbers of what they are. But Keon Coleman is going to finish in the top 10 of, of touchdown catches at Florida State for a single season. And he's 
I don't know. Is it crazy to think that he could get six more? I mean, he's got at least six games left. If you think about it like that, he's got the four games left of the season, the ACC championship, and then at least a bowl, maybe seven games left. Yeah, number eight is uh, E.G. Green, Snoop Minnis, Tommy Gardner, and Crofonzo Thorpe, all tied at 11. So just two more, and he's at, in the top eight. One more than that, he's top five. One more than that, he's top three. A couple more than that, he's number one ever with Andre Cooper and Kelvin Benjamin. So, all right, I'll shut up. Keon Coleman. What what a snag from the portal, man. That, that catch, it was hilarious. Like, he just, it was so casual and nonchalant for him. He's just, like, running his route, like, oh, yeah, touchdown. Are you not entertained? Like, I loved it. It was, it, man, this guy has been amazing. We knew that in Orlando against LSU when he, he went off against the, the Tigers. Um, man, uh, Keon Coleman, it, it's crazy that he's going to spend one year at Florida State and people in their in their 20s are probably going to think of him as one of their favorite players of Florida State of all time, right? Like, I'm, I'm not there yet, but if he does enough and we get to the playoff and – mess around, win a game and, you know, sneak into a national title. Yeah. This might be one of my favorite receivers of all time. Cause right now it's Peter work. Number one, he will never be eclipsed, but yeah, Keon has a real chance to, to come into that number two spot. And I just love what he's done at Florida state. And, you know, even the first screen pass when he caught it, when he just like smacked the guy away, like get off me. This is a touchdown. Unnecessary. <laughs> like, he didn't even need that stiff arm. And he still it was it hilarious. Anyway. Um, and then the one handed catch, man, Keon Coleman is ridiculous. And the fact that he was in the top eight in the rotation at Michigan state for Tom Izzo in basketball, that's crazy too. But yeah, man, he, he's man. It, we are lucky. We got him. We really are. So shout out the battles end. If you're not given there, then you ought to be because, uh, they certainly yeah. helped to make that happen. All right, I threw these stats up. Can you see them on the screen here? Yeah. Um, Andre Cooper, Kelvin Benjamin, number one overall. Barry Smith, Anquan Bolden, tied for three. Ron Sellers, P-Dub, Greg Carr, they're at 12. E.G. Green, Snoop Bennis, Tommy Garner, Franzo Thurp at 11. So, Keon at nine right now. Where where do you got where do you have him landing? Where, where do you have him uh, landing... All time, you got so him he, breaking. You got him breaking it. So he's at nine right now. I, I don't think I have him breaking it just because there's so many weapons uh, on this Florida State offense. But I definitely see him getting. Uh, uh, I'll put him with with Quan and Barry Smith at thirteen. I, I think that's probably where he finishes at. But man, it, it would not surprise me if he got to sixteen. I'm just not going to call it right now. Yeah, I need to see a little bit more, but I. I, I kind of agree. Like he just, if he has one more game where he goes for like three, yeah. like, like if Johnny's, I mean, I think Johnny's going to play this weekend. We'll see. It's Sunday. Don't, don't somebody will say like, Oh, TJ said Johnny was going to play. And then he didn't, but like, if Johnny doesn't play, um, then yeah, like he's going to go for like two more against, Pitt, <laughs> you know, like that's, so it kind of just depends, you know, like how much teams should like shade him. But you remember Kelvin, Kelvin had, seven in the last three weeks, which is what was crazy. He had three Jeez. against yeah. three against Florida, three against Duke, and then one against uh, Auburn, obviously the big one. And so if you get a span like that, well, if you get seven from him in any three weeks, obviously he's going to win it. You know, he's going to go over, but see what he does against Pitt. It's kind of going to be a fun yeah. storyline for me to follow. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see if he could get like two or three against Pitt because if he does – and I don't think Florida State's like targeting him like an insane amount. Like, look at the touchdowns he's getting. Like, he's wide open, or it's one on one coverage, or it's his screen he's taking in. Like, obviously, they're targeting him a lot, but they're not just trying to like force it to him. He just makes ridiculous plays and ends up in the end zone. So, yeah, he could certainly break some records. Shout out Jordan Travis, broke, uh, has broken what two records now all time touchdowns and all time yardage uh, accounted for by a quarterback. Um, I saw that. He is, I believe, seven wins away from tying Chris Winky and all-time quarterback wins. Don't tell me quarterback wins aren't a stat. He's seven wins <laughs> away with a potential eight wins left um, on the scale on the season. We'll, you know, see if we can get to that. But that'd be a that'd be a good way to break one more final record if you were uh, if you were Jordan Travis. So we'll see. I won't talk anymore about that. So. 
All right. After starting three and 10 under this staff, Richie, Florida State is 23 and six in their last 29 games. They've won 14 in a row in 18 of their last 21. I saw a stat yesterday that they were three, uh, I'm sorry, they were um, eight and 13 in their first 21 games. And since then, they are 18 and three in their next 21 games. Um, the turnaround has been pretty insane. I don't know if you have any just general thoughts on that or not, but then we'll talk a little Louisville, Virginia tech and some other stuff that happened this weekend. Yeah. And, and you know, in we can go back and forth about this, but you know, Mike Norvell clearly came in at the worst possible time. He had no ties to the Southeast, you know, with COVID, he couldn't host recruits. He couldn't visit recruits. It, it was just a terrible situation. And if we weren't paying Willie Tagger, I think there's a chance Mike Norvell might've been fired and it's, Oh, amazing in hindsight that he was not because clearly Mike Norvell is the coach to lead this program. And I love what's going on right now. And I love that Florida state is again, eight and oh, and I, TJ, maybe we should do a live reaction show on Tuesday. You know, I'm just throwing this out there. You know, we haven't even talked about this uh, for the college football playoff because man, I think there's a chance we're in the top two when the, when these playoff rankings drop. I read a couple of articles that like kind of gave the the for and against and Ohio State has the best like strength of record right now and yeah. Florida State has the second best and I I will say I think that what Georgia did this weekend though I think Florida is a pretty awful team I think that uh, what Georgia did this weekend was pretty impressive and and I, you know it's kind of like when George when when Georgia gets put on upset alert which shout out Kirk Herbstreit for putting us on that too when Georgia gets put on upset alert like, <laughs> like they kind of like yeah <laughs> they like perk up and they're like oh you think oh you think this is the time we're gonna lose like <laughs> it happened with Kentucky it happened with UF like don't do that and hey, listen just pick them against Missouri because if you ever want Georgia to get upset like just don't be picking against them all week because they certainly do use that as motivation but. Um, yeah, I could see anything from two to four. I, I'd be pretty shocked if it was one. I'd be pretty shocked if it was five. It won't um, be one. I don't think it'll be four. I think we're two or three. Yeah, I, I think it's... I, I wouldn't be super shocked with four just because I, I wouldn't be shocked with them saying Ohio State, Michigan um, in there at two and three, um, knowing that that's going to work itself out. And I don't I don't have a huge problem with it one way or the other. Like I'm not yeah. going to melt down if it's four, yeah. if we're five, I'm definitely coming on here. And oh, I'll be down. pissed. If so it's yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'll be exciting. Halloween night though. So we'll see. I don't know what time that show is, but if it's during the, uh, if it's during trick or treating, I'm, I'm out. It's usually like nine o'clock though. Usually it's like super late. Um, but yeah, college football playoff rankings come out. Um, hey, you, uh, Robert Griffin the third said something about this. I'm actually just recorded a video that'll come out in the next couple of days on it. But um. RG3, I don't know if you could hear it at the bar you were at, but uh, he talked about how Jordan was like back in the Heisman race. Um, did you did you think he did enough this weekend? Or what are your thoughts on just where the Heisman race is in general? I think if Jordan has a big game against Miami, he's absolutely in the Heisman race, right? Because you know, it, it, Michael Penix Jr., he's going to lose a game. If Washington goes undefeated, then he's going to win the Heisman. Like it, it, that, That's done. But I do think he loses a game. And if Florida State goes undefeated, thirteen and zero heading into the you know downtown Athletica Club, I think Jordan Travis has a legit chance. I don't care if he wins it or not. Like it would be awesome if he did. Obviously, I just hope he gets an invitation because man, that would be so cool. I think that kid, from what you think about when he was at Louisville, hated his experience there. Came to Florida State, thought about giving up football entirely, and for him to end up. At the Downtown Athletic Club, man, that would be awesome. I just want Jordan Travis to to get to New York. Um, I would obviously love for him to win it, but and I do think he has a legitimate chance. If he has a big game against Miami, and then another big game against Florida, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about who he'll play against in the ACC championship. We have no idea right now. Yeah, he's got a legit chance, and I'm pulling for him wholeheartedly. Yeah, I, if the Knowles go 13-0, and I'd be pretty shocked for him to not be in New York um, for the ceremony. Whether he wins it or not, I think there's a lot that will go into that. What what has happened in the Pac-12? Has Washington eliminated themselves? Has, has Jaden Daniels picked up a big win against Alabama? Has uh, McCarthy stayed undefeated? Same thing there. If, if they go 13-0 and and beat Ohio State, I would expect McCarthy to be yeah, in. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, so one of those Pac-12 
quarterbacks, I think, will eliminate themselves by when they lose in the Pac-12 championship. And, and I think Jaden Daniels kind of falls out if they lose to Bama or Georgia or something down the stretch. So I think Jordan has every chance to be there. I, I actually like – I don't know that I like his odds to win it, but I like Jordan's odds to be in New York more than anyone else's because I think he's the – I think he's the quarterback that has the 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 mo- like is most likely to be undefeated and a 13-0 quarterback you know is not going to miss it you know like that's just that's just is what it is so all right, talk a little Heisman. Hey, uh, quick shout out to GarnetandGold.com. Make sure you're using the code no slaw for any FSU uh, gear that you're picking up. I see Richie's polo that looks like a Garnet and Gold special for sure. Um, they've got hats that are much like this. Um, this is my favorite logo that we have. The state of Florida. Uh, in the gold, you don't have the, they don't have this exact one. This is like a f- several year old model, but um, garnetgold.com. Make sure you're using code no slaw n o s l a w. Um, Louisville versus Virginia Tech this weekend, Richie. Is that a preview of our matchup in Charlotte? What say you? Uh, the ACC is so. It's just crazy, man. There's so many teams in the ACC that that could make it to Charlotte. I think Florida State's definitely one of them. Um, Surprisingly, Clemson will not be one of them uh, after their loss uh, against NC State. Shout out Hunter uh, this week. But, man, that that was – I think this game will decide who plays Florida State in Charlotte. And I I think it's going to be Louisville. Uh, but if it's Virginia Tech, man, I'm feeling really good about our chances to win in that game, TJ. Yeah, I think it's Louisville as well. Um, and I, I'll tell you this. I'm not even super con- uh, convinced that even if Virginia Tech does find a way to win it, now they'd have the tiebreaker. And so they would have to lose two more times. But I just don't think Virginia Tech's very good. And no. so they could lose on the road at BC without a doubt. And they could certainly lose against NC State. And then Virginia's even looked good enough. They nearly beat Miami this week. They beat North Carolina. So I think they'd still have three really tough games. But, you know, Louisville's got tough games down the stretch as well. Louisville has to play um, – Obviously, Virginia Tech this week. Miami as well, I believe. Right? Louisville has to play Virginia, who just gave a little credit to, and Miami on the road. And so that Miami game is coming off the game against us. And so Miami may have quit by that point in the year, but we'll see. I mean, I think that, you know, so this thing to me for second place, and that's what I was telling you earlier, I don't want to test this out, but I think there's a scenario Florida State loses the next two games and still makes it to Charlotte. Now, again, I don't think that happens. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to play with that kind of fire, but. I think Virginia Tech could lose a couple of games. I think Louisville could lose a couple of games. North Carolina looks like dog crap after the last few weeks. Miami's in sword fights with Virginia down late and kind of getting lucky in overtime back-to-back weeks. Um, Yeah, I I just don't think – now, I think the Knowles go out and beat Pittsburgh. I think they beat Miami when they come to town too. So I think it's pretty locked up. But the ACC is like a – I don't – and what I think it is, Richie, being completely serious, I don't think anybody wants to play us in Charlotte. No. Which I don't blame them. Um, but I think it's Louisville. I think Louisville wins this weekend. That gives everyone two losses and they, everyone besides Louisville. And then I think Louisville beats Virginia. I mean, they could lose to Miami and still even be in, um, I guess it would maybe come down to a tiebreaker then between, um, UNC and Louisville because they didn't play each other. I don't know who would win that tiebreaker in that scenario, but yeah, I think Louisville's got the inside track for it, and then it'd probably be North Carolina after that if Louisville wins this weekend because I, I think they would have the tiebreaker with Virginia Tech, which would knock them out, though. I'd be fine playing Virginia Tech. I'd be I'd be completely yeah. okay with that rematch. Yeah, that, that, that would be phenomenal. Um, you know, in Louisville, they're a good team, man, and, and Jeff Brom is a good coach. I, I think they would definitely be a challenge in Charlotte, but at the same time, i would like Florida state in that matchup. There's not an ACC team that I would look at and say, man, how are we going to beat them? No, if we play the game with the way we should, we will beat every team in the ACC and we'll show that against Miami in two weeks. Yeah. No, I'm not, not super worried about anybody in the ACC. You got to take every opponent seriously. I think got to take Pitt uh, seriously this yeah, weekend. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, yeah. 
but if Florida State plays their A game, they're they're not losing to anybody in the ACC um, or anyone in the state of Florida um, since we have <laughs> one, more, one more against uh, that team over there. So um, Oklahoma eliminated themselves from the playoff picture this weekend with a loss. Now, what if they win out? You still think no way? Still think they can't do it? It depends what happens, but man, I mean, chaos, I think. a 12 and one Oklahoma team with a loss to Kansas and Kansas is a good football team. I, I'm not trying to dismiss them by any means, but yeah, I, I think that this weekend and, you know, we, we talked about it Wednesday. I, I said, I thought they would win, but it'd be close. Nah, man, Kansas came out and did what they had to do and won the game. But I, I just don't see a, a scenario where they get in the playoff at this point. You know, they, they could beat Texas again. That'd be great, but there'd have to be multiple two loss conference champions um, in that scenario. I just don't see Oklahoma being in the playoff at this point. Yeah, I, I it would take a lot, right? You'd need, yeah. I mean, because even if Florida State lost the game leading up to it, say Florida State lost to Miami and then won out, like I think they're in over them. Obviously, the yeah. SEC champ's going to be in over them. The Big Ten champ's going to be in over them. I think a 12 and one Oregon would be in over them. I think a 12 and one. Washington might be in over them. I, you know, maybe even your one loss Big Ten team, say Ohio State goes 11 and one and losing to Michigan in a close oh, 100%. game. 100%. Yeah. They might be in over them. So, yeah, I think it's going to be tough for them. We'll see. Crazy things do happen in the last month of college football in November. But, uh, yeah, I'd be pretty shocked at this point if Oklahoma made it. Um, what else we got? Uh, Florida, Georgia. Did you watch that one yesterday? Did you catch the highlights? I did. It was. A fun game to watch. The Florida it was State a great fan. game for us to watch. I it, it was a fun game to watch. You know, uh, Georgia did what they did without Brock Bowers, like, which yeah. was surprising. Like, I honestly, I didn't bet the game, but if I did bet it, I was going to bet Florida uh, plus 14 and a half and not even close. Like, they just got destroyed. Um, you know, I, I still think the trip to the swamp is going to be a tough game at the end of the season, but. I took solace in watching Florida just get beat down by Georgia, their their second biggest rival. Yeah, no, it was it was awesome to watch. Um, Florida was so hyped up after scoring on the first drive, a touchdown, which their scripted stuff did really well, and then the uh, holding Georgia to a field goal and up seven three. And then uh, honestly, why I think Florida will never beat us. Um, as long as Billy Napier is there, and it's Billy Napier versus Mike Norvell. Like Billy Napier came out and lost them that game yeah. um, when they. They and it wasn't just the fourth down call, which that was horrific as well. But they were moving the ball at will on Georgia, and then he decides to run like a double reverse, and it takes him out of um, it. It it's, it sets him behind the chains, right? They they immediately go from uh, first and ten, moving the ball really well to like second and twelve or second and thirteen, and they end up having to punt on that drive. Um, Georgia goes down and scores, make it t- ten to seven, and then he had the horrific fourth down call. Um, where you snap the ball through the quarterback's legs. I mean, that was some Willie Taggart, like lining up backwards crap. I don't know how, you know, that's not getting called out more for how awful of a play call it was. Georgia goes and scores again, makes it 17 to seven. And then you have the blocked, um, you know, special teams punt. Um, Special teams has been a problem for them all year. Game's over at that point, you know, like three bad drives in a row from the Gators and Georgia just absolutely rolling on them um, at that moment. And it was great to kind of watch, you know, the rest of the game just go UGA's way and, and Florida never really have a chance. Listen, they finish up with, you know, something I actually looked at today, Richie. There is a lot of talk about how Florida State's only good because they are um, in the ACC. And Fl- Florida State would never be able to do what Florida has done uh, if they played a real schedule. And Florida's schedule gets really, really tough here over the next few weeks. They play three more ranked teams in Missouri, uh, LSU, and Florida State. They also have Arkansas, who's not any good, but still three top 15-ish teams, one of them being a top five team in Florida State. Um, That's a really brutal stretch to end the year. But right now, Florida State is 8-0, and they have the eighth, I'm sorry, the seventh toughest strength of schedule to this point in the year. Now, that's not counting the four bad teams that they're about to play through the rest of the year. Right now, Florida has the 29th 
strength of schedule in the country. They've played the 29th most difficult schedule in America, and they're five and three, which 29th out of, you know, so you're like 30th out of 130. Like, that's not terrible, right? It's like the top quarter, but they're five and three against the 29th hardest schedule, whereas Florida State's eight and oh against the seventh hardest schedule. Now, again, Florida's next few weeks are going to rocket them up that strength of schedule, but I just want the record to show, and I want it to be known that like their dog crap against a mediocrely difficult schedule is mediocrely a, a word. Um, Florida State's eight and oh against the seventh hardest schedule in the country. Shout out to Ohio State. They're 8-0 against the second hardest schedule in the country. Um, only two undefeated teams against a top 10 um, strength of schedule that that is that difficult. But thoughts on that, Richie? Just Florida being even more embarrassing, being so bad against a bad schedule. Yeah, I, I think one of the cool things, there are only eight undefeated teams left in the country, TJ, and Florida State is one of them. And man, we've been dreaming for days like this for a long time and here we are and here we are 23 point favorite against Pitt next week and then it's Miami it, it, that that game if Florida State can beat Miami that's what my focus is on um sure uh, Pitt could beat us like I, I I firmly believe that if we come out and play like we did against BC Pitt can beat us but we should be 9-0 and after next week. And then it's Miami. And if you beat Miami, North Alabama, that's a layup. And then it's Florida to go 12-0 and for your fourth undefeated season in school history. Man, we, we are on a track right now that is special that I don't think a lot of people realize. What's interesting to me is um, when you talk about that Florida matchup, I'll say this about uh, UF and then we'll move on past them, talk a little FPI, which we don't love. And then I've got a fun stat for you and we'll wrap this thing up. Um, but uh, a lot is made about when Florida loses to Georgia, they immediately bring up the recruiting rankings and they say how recruiting's just not good enough because of the guy that was there recruiting for Florida before he before Napier got there. I think there are two issues with that. Um, number one is that like 75% of the roster is Napier's when you count in the transfers and the uh, and, and the two classes that he's recruited. And then when you say that the recruiting is the issue when you play Georgia, um, what's the excuse when you lose to teams that you have recruited better than? Florida State, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Utah, Tennessee, uh, and others, right? And so I think that's... You, you can't say the issue is recruiting when you play Georgia, but then when you lose to Florida State in a couple of weeks, who you have recruited better than over the last four years, um, you have to fall back to a different excuse. So anyway, all right, Jeremiah is the only one that loves us this week. Florida State! Touchdown, FSU! Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think that's probably all about the same. I mean, Florida, I mean, I think that, you know, the way that, I mean, Florida is who they are, right? They're over under in Vegas was five and a half games. They're probably going to get to six wins because they beat Arkansas this weekend. I'd love to be wrong about that. I'd love for Arkansas to end up beating them. But I mean, Florida is about who you thought that they would be. I don't think that Florida State's strength of schedule is going to come into anything or matter. Um, if they were to drop a game, they're going to need some help to get into the playoff. If they win out, they're in, right? And so I don't know that it matters too much. Um, Yes, but to answer your question, yes, Florida being a six-win team or a five-win team when we go into the swamp is going to lower our strength of schedule, um, but I don't know that it matters. It's also the 12th game of the year. By that point, it's one-twelfth of your schedule, whereas if you play a team that's got you know no wins in week four, that's a quarter of your schedule. So it will lower it. But I mean, so will playing North Alabama, so will playing Miami, so will playing Pittsburgh. And and so, you know, the next few weeks, I wouldn't be shocked if Florida has a harder strength of schedule than Florida State when it's all said and done. But they're going to go six and six against like a top 10 strength of schedule. And we're going to go 12 and 0 against like a top 20 strength of schedule. I would certainly take our top 20 strength of schedule and 12 and 0 record over theirs um, any day of the week. Uh, you ever see, Richie, you ever see the. Um, I don't know what they are. They're either like the Kelly rankings or the Ford rank something. I Probably see them all the Ford, time, yeah. though. But they like show which teams would go undefeated against other people's schedules, 
And like, we're always at the top. Like Florida State would yeah. go undefeated against every, like Florida State would have had, and now Ohio State's actually a little bit higher now. But um, yeah, like Florida State would be at worst seven and one against Florida's schedule. And that would just come down to the Georgia game, which just happened this weekend. Um, I don't think there, I don't think there's any question about that. So Rich, yeah. any thoughts on any of that schedule talk? No, I think Florida State's played a pretty tough schedule. I, you know, Florida's played itself on as well. But when you account for Georgia, you know, they, they probably beat Florida State more often than not. But I do think Florida State has the ability to beat Georgia. And, and that's what it's going to come down to. Georgia, Michigan, right? That, that Those are the two teams that Florida State is going to have to account for. And I think they're capable of beating both. They're, they're less likely than more likely to beat each of those teams. But man, if you get to a national t- title game it, it, against Georgia or Michigan, yeah, I think there's a chance you win that game. I think that the odds are Georgia or Michigan wins that game. But man, don't let Jordan Travis get off to a hot start. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So last little fun stat here. We had some people asking about the Miami uh, Virginia game, um, which, yeah, that was kind of fun to watch. Miami snuck by UVA. For the uh, for the vaunted crown of um, <laughs> you know beating one of the worst teams in the conference, um, Florida State has now spent nine straight weeks in the top five. Uh, shout out my guy FSU plays daily on Twitter who tweeted this nine straight weeks in the top five for Florida State, which is a lot for reference. The Miami Hurricanes have only spent two weeks ranked inside the top five in the last 19 (laughs) years, which is very few. Um, I like the way that he pointed out, which is a lot and which is very few. Um, I think that program, I don't think that program is ever coming back. I just want to say that. I I just, I don't think so. No, no, it's not. And it's, you know, you look at their bull wins, even, you know, one of their biggest videos was, (laughs) Showing a, the, the cheese it Bowl equivalent, like uh, taking that trophy to recruits' houses, and then the NPC computer pulls um, <laughs> against Nevada, where they missed the extra point, mm-hmm. with, where Miami won. Like, no, that that program is dead, and they will never come back, in my opinion. Never. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Um, and like I said, I I am a huge. So they play. Um, I'm interested to see tomorrow if our game against them gets six day optioned or not. Um, the uh, I think it's 8 p.m. Yes, no, actually, no. There's a lot of good games that we can actually. Well, what you got to look at is like what are the good games in the ACC, right? And so that's really what matters because you can have a good SEC game against a good ACC game. You can have a good Big Twelve game against, it. but like, what do the ACC games look like that weekend? And to be honest with you, the the big one is Duke Carolina, but with both of them losing the last two weeks, in that game, yeah, I is think that still game. like that game two weeks ago looked like it was going to be everything, but it doesn't look like it's going to be anything now. You got two teams that both are three and two in the ACC. Uh, actually, Duke's two and two. And does that game hold as much weight? You got Georgia Tech, Clemson. I don't think that game holds a lot of weight. Virginia Tech, Boston College. I don't think people care about that. Pitt, Syracuse. I don't think people care. NC State, Wake Forest. Don't think people care. And so, to me, Miami, though they're two and two, I you know it'd almost be good for us if they beat NC State. I'm certainly not cheering for that this weekend. But does the rivalry beat out all those other games? And I think it does. Um, Duke Carolina is the only one I'm really worried about. Um, it looks like that game would be for the ACC championship or a berth in it at one point. But if we can get a night game for that, that'd be obviously phenomenal. I think that'd be good for Jordan's tra- Jordan's Heisman odds too. Like that being a night game yeah. would, would be massive. Um, <clears throat> but getting that game late, uh, would be huge for the Knowles. But yeah, they're they're I don't know, they're they're a dumpster fire though. So like don't be shocked if it's 3 30. I've had some people tell me it could be a weird time. Like it could be like a 6 p.m. kick. I guess I'd be fine with that as well. Um but I'm a I'm a huge Razorbacks fan this week, Richie. Um I'd really <laughs> like to see Florida miss a ball <laughs> um in year two under Napier. So any shout outs, Richie? Anything on your mind? No, nothing on my mind. It's a Again, enjoy being eight and O guys. This does not happen often. This will not happen next year, probably. But 
just enjoy what we are witnessing right now and hopefully not in no next weekend. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Shout out. Uh, I didn't give any love to Gramco, but shout out the Gramco.com. You can use TJ 25 at checkout for 25% off. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We've got a lot of good stuff this weekend. Got a ref video that I know you guys are going to like tomorrow morning. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already also got something on Jordan Travis's Heisman odds that we'll put out at some point this weekend. We might even do a Pat and Arduzzi video as well. We'll be back Wednesday night live for the pit preview. Let's go 9 and 0. Let's get to 10 and 0, man. Let's go 13 and 0 and make that playoff so I can spend some more money on let's a go. playoff ticket. So I'm going to the playoff it's in New Orleans. I ain't going to LA. So all right, love you guys. Harlan Richie, thank you for your time tonight. Enjoyed hanging out. We'll talk to you guys soon. Go no.